don't feel I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield gotta keep on bringing souls to my Jesus by the service that I give well I'm just a hard fighting soldier and we're on the battlefield well 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 a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Well, I'm just a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. Gotta keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Well, I got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right. Well, on the oh, I can't do it by myself. Well, I got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right. Well, on the battlefield. Well, I got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right. Well, on the battlefield. Gotta keep on bringing souls to my Jesus by the service that I give. Well, I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Well, 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 a hard fighting soldier and we're on the battlefield. Well, I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Well, gotta keep on bringing souls to my Jesus by the service that I give. Well, I got to walk right and talk right and Oh, you can't do it by yourself. You know you need some help. On the battlefield. Well, I got to walk right and talk right and I need help in the talking right and pray right. Well, on the battlefield. Well, I've got to walk right and talk. Help me, Lord. Sing right and pray right. Well, on the battlefield, gotta keep on bringing souls to Jesus. Gotta keep on bringing souls to Jesus. Gotta keep on bringing yeah, 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 to Jesus by the service that I give. Well, I got to walk right, talk right, sing right. Pray right, right well, Lord. The you got it. Well, we I got to walk right, talk right, sing. Right, yes, you do. Pray they looking. On the oh, you think your co workers ain't looking? They looking. Oh, we got to walk right, talk right. Yes, we do. Sing right. Pray right, right well, on the, the battlefield. You gotta keep on bringing souls. Gotta keep on bringing souls to Jesus. Gotta keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Uh, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this wonderful? This is for us to remember our mission. What is our mission statement? We are God's family sent to show his love to a broken world, to share his hope of eternal life, to serve his community, and to send others to do the same. How do we do this in 3D? We had denial. 4D. It's in 3D. But this is our 4D. Denial, discovery of God's word, devotion to God and his purpose, and dependence on what? 
the Holy Spirit. This is what we're motivated. This was going to move us. This is going to help us. And all of this is based upon the word of God and scripture. We didn't just come off the top of our heads with this. This was thought through for months. And this is based upon the word of God. Last, uh, we're talking in this section of studies, we're talking about the idea of brokenness. This idea of brokenness. You know, all we have to do to understand and to look at brokenness is just as a form of review, what happened last week? And I just audience participation in terms of brokenness. What happened last week in the news? Kids got killed senselessly at a school, right? In, in, in L.A. also, what else did we have? It seems like we can't go driving today with somebody getting wrecked in, a, in an auto accident, right? Then when people get mad, they take it out on each other. So the way that I deal with the problem is I don't like you. I'm just going to blow you away. How many murders have we had this week? A lot of murders, right? What else is going on in the news? Brokenness. What now? Go, go, hit me. Row wedding's not broken, but... Something else. Something's been going on this week in the news. Have you forgotten? We've got this the thing with the, uh, the government, with Trump. What else is going on? We've had other deaths. We'd have other deaths. Yeah, yeah, we've got that going on. We've got a whole, again, how many, again, uh, uh, Again, how many today? How many audio? How, how many audio? How many auto wrecks have we had? Watch the news. It's getting to the point now. I used to like to watch the news to know what's going on. Now I don't want to know what's going on. Within the first 15 minutes, it's death, death, murder, death, murder. Everything is going on. This reminds us over and over again: is not to don't get comfortable with the world. Because the world has things that offer us just for right now, without Jesus, we're dealing with a lot of death and a lot of destruction. So don't get too comfy and don't get too friendly with the world. Because we, our mission is to go into this broken world and to bring the gospel of Christ to people. But in this study of brokenness, we're going to be looking at the beginning of brokenness. We're going to be looking at how things started. And we're going to look at... Uh, just a world or a creation stuck in brokenness. When we understand the word broken and when we understand the world, uh, the world created, the creation, we're talking about the creation this morning, and the idea of creation means everything that has been created by God. We're not talking just about mankind. We're talking about everything that is created by God which can be summed up in what word? The word, uh, the universe, everything, uh, the, uh, everything that has been created by God. And then Paul and the others are going to be talking about this idea of creation. And we're going to be looking at a creation that is stuck in brokenness. As we look at this creation is stuck in brokenness, and you got to understand the way it goes, why, the, way, the reason why we're talking about creation, because Brokenness goes beyond us. Sin goes beyond us. When you sin, sometimes you think it's a private thing. But sin goes beyond us. It affects other people. You get a pebble and toss it into the water, and you see concentric rings expanding upon the water. When we sin, the sin goes out, and it affects everybody. One man's sin affects everybody everybody. And I want to show us how dangerous it is and, and show us there is some hope in Jesus Christ. We're going to be looking at a world or creation stuck in brokenness. We like to look at three ideas in this very quickly. A creation, a creation cursed. A creation to a creation cries. And the third, a creation cleansed. Let's go to the beginning. We're going to be looking at several scriptures to look at this point. Let's look at the very, the very beginning. 
Let's go in the book of Genesis, which is the book of origins, the book of beginnings. And in, uh, we understand in the first two chapters that God exercised his creative activity and created the heavens and the earth and everything upon it. And the crown of his creation was man. And then after the, the cherry on the top, the crown of the creation of man, that he created man and then he created woman. Again, creative activity of God. And God had planted in Adam and Eve in the garden and commanded them not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Look, everything Adam could eat, he was dominant over everything. God brought the animals to Adam. Look, Adam, you name the animals. Whatever they come before you, you name it. Mr. Lion, Mr. Leopard, Mr. Cheetah. They weren't after Adam at that time. He had dominion over them. He said, you could eat anything you want. In fact, you don't know that you're naked. You could go around with no clothes. The temperature is regulated. You are living in paradise. You, you, have, you have it made. All your job to do is to keep the garden and tend it. No weeds, no bad things, because it was a perfect atmosphere. But we understand that creation was cursed. How was creation cursed? Let's look at our text. Let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. They were tempted to take up time. The serpent came, which was Satan in disguise, in his pre-fallen form, and tempted the woman and tempted God's authority, I mean, and challenged God's authority by adding which one word God did not say. And he challenged God's word, and Eve believed it, she believed in the lie. She disregarded her, her position. Her position was to be a helpmeet for her husband. So she decided to uh, look at the fruit, and she decided to take of the fruit. Then she gave the fruit to Adam. And if you look at what happened, the roles were reversed. What happened was Eve acted independently in spite of her husband and decided to give Adam the fruit. Adam did not exercise his authority, and what happened? He listened to the voice of his wife. That's not saying don't listen to your wives. Brothers have jumped on that and misbutchered the scripture, okay? But he listened to the voice of his wife that time when she was wrong, when he should have exercised authority, and they both disobeyed God. What happened when they disobeyed God? Their relationship was severed. Their eyes became open. They became aware of good and evil. And what happened? They were ashamed. They tried to hide themselves from the Lord. What the Bible tells us that God was walking in the cool of the day. The presence of the Lord was, was, was visible before they fell. They could communicate. They could talk to God. When their relationship was severed, they couldn't see God anymore. They were filled with guilt. When we get full of sin, we get filled with guilt. We try to hide it or we try to sin at night to cover our tracks so people won't see what we do unless you are really out on the deep end and don't care what people think about sin. So what happened? They tried to hide from the Lord. And he asked Adam, where are you? And Adam, the first thing he did was to blame Eve on it. <laughs> yeah. The woman you gave me, you know. Instead of asking God, he said, what did you do? Instead of just saying, I have sinned, I have done wrong in your sight, he blamed the woman. And what happens when we get caught in sin, we want to find an excuse for it and blame other people. Instead of taking responsibility and saying, look, I did wrong. No, no, no. Leroy did it. Cleophas did it. Sheila did it. And we point the fingers at everyone but ourselves. Amen. Amen. And then when God questioned the woman and the, the, Eve in the King James Version, it said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. The serpent tricked me and I did eat. So God put a curse on the serpent and told him that he was going to uh, go on his belly all of his life and he shall eat dust and he shall be the scourge of uh, the creative uh, order. When God gives a curse, this this gives power to the word. This is God 
commenting and giving judgment upon a situation. See, when we curse, we just like to say bad words. But in the Old Testament, it meant something totally different. It meant that if you had, when the prophets acted under God's uh, uh, command, when they put a curse on something, that was the spoken word uh, uh, activated, the spoken word giving judgment upon a situation to punish evil. So when God gave a curse, he was not playing. So, when, so we get to Adam, and we get to Genesis chapter 3. I'll meet you at verse number 17. Uh, before that, God cursed the woman, and, he forth, and, he, and from that point, she was going to bring forth children in pain. How many of you have, here have had children? Raise your hands. Well, ma females who've had children. <laughs> Males, we share, we watch, but we ain't experiencing the pain. When I saw what my wife went through with all the blood and sparks and everything like that, I said, honey, I love you. And the first thing she said, please don't make me go through this again. The curse is still there. Amen. There's still pain in labor. Amen. But to the man, to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree, which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed, what? Is the ground for your sake. Cursed is the ground. The ground is going to be cursed. This was supposed to be a point of where you're going to have your labor. I've got news for you. The ground is going to be cursed for your sake. What does he say? In toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. In other words, you're going to have to earn a living to eat bread. Today, you have to earn a living to eat food. You have to earn a living to eat. Okay? We are still under the curse. In paradise, God would have provided food. We wouldn't have need clothes. We wouldn't have to compete for clothes. We were in an ideal relationship. In fact, we didn't have to worry about death because God wanted us to be with him forever. That relationship was broken. Now we have to uh, earn that money. We've got to go to work. We've got to sweat. We've got to toil. The ground is cursed, and I'll explain that in just a second. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field, and in the sweat of your face, I'm sorry, you shall, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. We are still under that curse. We still, life is severed. We live for a brief time. We live for a brief time, amen, and we have to work. And then we return to the ground. We are still suffering. Guess what? Because one man sinned, Adam and Eve together, we suffer the punishment of this. We suffer the curse because of this. Okay? We suffer this. On top of that, I'm going ahead of myself. The ground is cursed. Guess what this means? That the physical universe is cursed. That means that even beyond the physical universe, the cosmos is cursed. The creation is under the curse. Guess what? Haven't you wondered why do we have tornadoes? Why do we have earthquakes? We look at Kilauea. Hawaii is supposed to be a paradise. What do we have in there now? Volcanic eruptions. God is showing that I am in control. The earth is under a curse. We have tidal waves. We have earthquakes. Whenever we have earthquakes, we have to all wait till God stops it shaking. And then he gets our attention. Guess what? We have lightning storms. We have snowstorms. We have famine. We have death. We have pestilence. We have disease. We grow old. 
we try to act like we don't grow old. But we suffer all these things because God put a curse on creation. Because of man's disobedience, we all suffer. And, he, and he's trying to get our attention. He's trying to draw us to him through all of this. Whenever we go through earthquake, famine, death, all these things are designed supposedly to bring us closer to God. For us not to run away from God. So God is not playing. Cursed is the ground. You're going to have to work, buddy. You're going to have to provide. You're going to have to sweat until you return to the ground. Because you were taken out of it and you are going to be returned to it. We'll go down to verse number 22. Then the Lord said, the Lord God said, behold, man has become like us, a, 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 one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. What God is saying is because man has fallen and he knows that he will die, he may try to go to the tree of life and take the tree of life and eat it, and live forever. And God, he, now he knows what's good and evil. What would have happened is that man would have lived forever in a fallen state. He would have lived forever being in a fallen state, being disconnected from God, living forever. And God said, uh-uh, no. I'm going to send an angel down there with a sword that goes in all directions to keep people away from the tree of life. Lest he try to come. Because again, what man wanted to do, God tempted Eve and he tempted Adam. Don't you want to become like God's? So why don't you go to the tree of, of, of uh, the tree of life and take a bite of that and live forever? God said, no. I'm going to protect this tree. And while I'm at it, look what it says. Therefore, God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man and placed a cherubim, which is an angel, the east of the Garden of Eden, with a flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Man was broken. The relationship with God was severed. And the sin, that one sin, extended into his offspring. Eve became the mother of all living, but this sin followed Adam and Eve. He had two sons, Cain and Abel. One son couldn't stand, the other was jealous, and God approved his sacrifice, which should have been an animal sacrifice. And Cain thought he could substitute fruits and vegetables. He thought he'd give God a vegan, uh, a vegan sacrifice. God didn't accept that. Amen. So Cain, out of jealousy and anger, killed his brother. And Cain did the other thing. When God asked, when God asked Cain, where's his brother? Is my, my brother's keeper? Am I supposed to be watching out for my brother? And God said, the ground cries with your brother's blood. After that, then we had Lamech. I'm, I'm butchering his name. Lamech. Lamech decided that I, I don't want one wife. I want two. God didn't command him to do that. And the Lamech also killed somebody else. So you had murder. You had that and up till the time of Moses, violence started to grow into mankind. That one sin began to grow and to grow and to grow and to grow. We live in a fallen state, people. Don't make friends with the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because all in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. This will blind us to realizing the glory of God. This will blind us to be dependent upon God because God says, do not make Friends with the world. The world, the world system is satanic and it is broken. Don't get comfortable. We are just pilgrims. Well, I live on 38, 34 Dublin. Don't get comfortable. That's my old address. Don't get comfortable. Do not get comfortable. So we have this relationship broken. We have this lack of trust we have that sin has entered into the world. We have all these 
cosmic chaos, chaotic things going on. Even the cosmos is broken. I want you to understand this. Out in outer space, there are things called cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are lethal. We have radiation running all over the place. God has blessed us to be on the earth. A little science lesson. We have a thing called the Van Allen belt that protects us against the radiation from the sun. There's radiation from the stars. We have all these cosmic rays and radiation out there. The cosmos is a dangerous place. What else do we have zipping by? Meteors. How many times have we heard recently that there's a meteor that just missed us? That's the hand of God protecting us. Amen. But we got stuff flying through the solar system. The creation is broken. When the sun starts to flare, we have deadly radiation. And if you read the comics, we're going to be turned into X-Men if we don't watch it. Mutants. But the idea that the whole creation is crazy. Man can't go into the jungle and say, hey, Mr. Lion. No, he can't. Hey, Amen. You can't pick up a snake and say, hey, Mr. Snake. This isn't Dr. Doolittle where you talk to the animals and all this other stuff. We live in a broken system. Jump in the water and say hi to the shark with a cut on your hand. Things will change very fast. We live in a broken world. We live in a world that has been cursed because of the sin of God. Romans, Romans 15, I'm sorry, Romans 5.12, excuse me, Romans 5.12. Romans 5.12. And Romans 5.12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Because of this, this condition, because of the condition that we find ourselves with sin. Uh, and I want you to understand that man and creation are linked together. We are part of creation, but the Bible speaks of creation as another entity. Everything else that God has created, but we are linked. Because of this condition of sin, it means that we are living in a frustrating time. Because we struggle with sin. Amen. We struggle with sin. When we don't struggle with sin, therefore, we are blinded. Maybe that we're not troubled by sin and we have it all together or we think we have it all together. Everybody is bothered by sin. Everybody sins. We like to act like we don't. And when we come to worship, we certainly act like we don't have sin. But in reality, before God, all of us struggle with sin. As much as pride tells us we don't, we do. And the thing about it is that because of this inner struggle, that creation even groans because of this condition. Turn with me to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah chapter 24. And we get to the second part. After creation is cursed, creation cries. Look at Isaiah and look at Isaiah chapter 24 and look at the third verse to six. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered for the Lord has spoken his word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languages and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned up and few men are left. That's Isaiah's prophetic talk about how the earth is going through mourning and creation. 
And creation is subject to frustration, if we could look at it that way. Because uh, creation is also separated from God. God is still in control, but it is under a curse because it is not doing what it should be doing. Look quickly at Romans chapter 8. Just a few verses in Romans chapter 8. And I want to show you something. In Romans chapter 8, look at verse 20. And I want to show you. Oops. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 20. Notice what the Bible says. It says, for creation was subjected to fertility, not willing, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Creation was subject to, and the idea when it says futility, it's the, it, it means aimlessness uh, or uh, not doing what God intended. Your original purpose has been ch taken away. Creation is in futility. It is not doing what God had intended. Creation is subject to futility because it is not doing what God had intended. The meteors flying across the universe is not what God had intended. The volcano erupting is not what God had intended. The lightning and, and the whirlwind and the tornadoes is not what God has intended. These are parts of the curse. The universe is going through because it's not doing what God has intended. We as humans are not doing what God has intended. We were intended to be worshiping God, be praising God, have an open relationship with him. And we are all and not sinning and doing what is right before the sight of God to be in paradise. We are in futility because even Paul in Romans chapter 7 talks about the good that I would do. And I want to do good and I'm frustrated because the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And all these other things and it creates frustration. You know, you make a sin and you do something really bad. You promise God, God, I promise I'm never going to do it again. And what happens right after that? And we make promises to God. I prom Every New Year's, we make New Year's resolutions. Bam, it's gone within two weeks for many people. So we are living in frustration. The universe is in frustration because it is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. The sun is supposed to be giving us light and warmth, not cancer. Amen. So this, but, but see, God gave the universe, gave the creation this frustration to remind them that they were, you, you, because the human being, you were once in paradise. You were once here. But I am creating this to remind you, to remind you. That you're not doing what you should be doing. Universe, you've got to understand this is a God-given thing. People, we've got to understand that God gives us his frustration to understand that we need to always seek after him. He's subjected in hope. He's given us hope because creation itself will also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glorious liberty of the children of God. In other words, creation itself is looking forward in hope to be delivered from decay, the, the bondage of decay, the bondage of growing old, the bondage of seasons, the bondage of rotting, the bondage of, you just look out there, pollution and all this other stuff. Creation is looking forward in hope that God is going to restore us to a paradise situation. The most uncontrollable element on earth is the sea. The sea brings life. But also the sea can destroy. And in ancient times, the sea was looked upon in a negative light. Because in, within the sea, you know, you can't swim, you're going to die. And then the sea could also, what happened with Noah? God caused the waters to rise and to wipe out the earth. When, God got, when, God's, uh, when God's patience is at the end, he destroyed man across the earth. But then he promised Noah that I'm not going to destroy the earth with water and the other scriptures point out that the universe is being saved for a time of fire and this is where God does not play 
So we understand that the universe or the creation is looking to be delivered from the bondage of corruption. But notice this, the glorious liberty of the children of God. We as Alondra, if we are, have been discipled in Christ, been listened to the spirit of God, believed with all of our heart, baptized for the remission of your sins, and learning to be a pupil of Jesus Christ and repenting of our sins, we are children of God. The universe is looking forward to the revealing of the sons of God. The universe is looking forward for Alondra to do the works of the mission of God. The universe is waiting for us to keep and complete and continue to do God's mission because it is looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. And when we do our love mission for the world, we are bringing the, the coming of Christ closer. Now, if you have been involved in sin, far away from Jesus, the coming of Christ will scare the daylights out of you. But what I'm learning is that if Jesus comes, take me. Life is getting hard on Johnny, and I'm not getting any healthier. Amen. Uh, I'm, having, I'm having health challenges. Please pray for my wife. We're both having health challenges. It's like you hit a certain age, and God just says, okay, bam, bam, bam. Bam, and I try, Lord, please, thank you, Lord, you know, but it gets hard. It gets frustrating. Amen. Disease is not meant to be, <laughs> I'm having a disease today. It's a dis-ease. Amen. Now, we can give, you know, it's not meant to be joyful, but we've got to find the joy in holding on to God. Creation is waiting for the coming of Christ because creation is waiting to be recreated. Okay? Creation groans. Creation is going through some pain right now. And as we are on this earth, we love God and he provides for us, but we are going through pain. Life has pain, folks. Amen. I mean, we can act like we don't, but we know we do. We know privately we have all these pains. Honey, child, my leg hurts. Oh, man, my knee hurts. Oh, man, my back hurts. Oh, man, my toes hurt. Oh, my eyeball starts to twitch. Oh, my neck starts to twitch. My teeth are starting to rattle. Amen. Pride tries to tell us to put on a good face. But in reality, we struggle. We are waiting. Now watch this. Let's, let's go a little further in Romans. It says that, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. In other words, creation is going through a birth pang. It's going through a, a, a childbirth. What do you mean? The created world? This is the, what Paul is saying. He said that the created world is going through child pain. Again, mentioned earlier, those of you who had children, you had pain, exceptional pain, that they had to give some of us drugs to stop the pain. So creation is going through an anticipation, but is also going through great pain at this time as an anticipation of a time when there will be a new birth, a time of cleansing, which is our next point. The universe is groaning because it's going through growth pains. The universe is in pain because the Bible said it's going through growth pains. It is in anticipation of something. It is, is, it is being prepared for something. It longs to be in a state where it, it was one with God. We as children of God should be longing for a state in which we were at one with God. Every time we get on a good road, sin comes and messes it up. And we're trying to do good, but we struggle with it. 
We all struggle with the pain. We struggle with sin. I, I long for a time when I got to deal with sin. Where we're in the presence of the Lord. We could be one with God. Wait, wait a minute. You're not going to have your cars. You're not going to have your fancy home. I mean, I'll be with the Lord who's going to provide all my needs. I don't have to worry about pain. I don't have to worry about death. I don't worry, have to worry about a, 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 a place to live. You know, how much do they charge in that hotel? Look. Lord says, I go prepare a place for you. And he's he's promised us that. But if we don't believe in the promise, then sin and all these things are going to start damaging and making our relationship even further and further and further from the Lord. Learn from creation. So creation is struggling. It's going through birth pains. But it has an expectation. Again, that expectation is also, watch what it says. Watch what it says. Watch what it says. Not only that. We also who have the first fruits of the spirit, we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Even though we have, what is that? What is the first fruits of the spirit? What are they? Come on now. (laughs) The fruits of the spirit. Love, joy. What else? Peace. What else? Meekness, self-control. All these things. The fruit of the spirit. He says, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Quickly, the first fruits of the Spirit is God's guarantee. And Ephesians says that we have the seal of the Spirit. If we, are, if we are faithful in Christ and we are his children, he has given us the seal. That's a guarantee that you belong to him, that you've been adopted by him. And the creation is waiting for us to be adopted, the final adopting, the redemption of our body. See, creation has gone through all of this all this time in in travail, in childbirth, and it is waiting for us to be like the sons of God. It is waiting for us to activate the fruits of the Spirit. It is waiting for us, for Christ to come again. But as Christ comes again, we become more like Christ. We fill the world with Christ's love. We become more not like ourselves, but we become converted more to Jesus. We become, as the church, see, The universe is in frustration because it's not doing what God wants us to do. What God wants us to do is do what he wants us to do. And creation itself is helped because we have been faithful to God. We are always tied to creation because, one, we are created in it, and we are a part of it, and it's waiting on us, and it is waiting on Jesus. Am I making sense here? Anticipation. Now, let's go to the next point, which is a little dark. A creation that is cleansed or restored or liberated. Again, we go back to the 23rd, and we see that not only us, that the first fruits of spirit, we groan within ourselves because it's eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemptions of our body. It is waiting for that redemption. It is waiting for salvation. Basically, creation is waiting for the return of Christ, where creation will be glorified. Now, this is a crescendo. This is the consummation of God's creative activity, our laundry mission, the salvation. And salvation is for those who believe and obey and surrender themselves to Jesus Christ. But there also comes a time when the universe will be cleansed. Turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 and 13. 2 Peter chapter 3. If the creation will be cleansed, what is going to be the agent of that? It's going to be God, Christ, and fire. You see, fire is used as a cleansing agent for metals. It burns out the bad and brings out the good. Fire is also a purifying agent. Fire is also used by God when he's going to change the creation. First, I'm Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. The um, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. In other words, translated, it means that the the elements will pass away with a gigantic hissing sound. That's all. I mean, that's all the Bible gives us a glimpse to. It is a massive hissing, great noise. What happens with a uh, 
thief in the night, I'm sorry, which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in will be burned up. In other words, don't get too comfortable with the, the world. Don't get too comfortable with the beaches and the parks and everything. There's going to come a day, which is called the day of the Lord, when God comes and he's going to burn away everything. But for us who are Christian and children of God, God has already come and taken us away in the church. He says he's going to come and the church will be delivered up to God. Those who are faithful to God will be delivered up to him. Now, there's differences of what else happens in the last days. But when the day of the Lord comes, he comes and he's not playing. Thessalonians talks about he's coming in flaming fire, taking vengeance of them that know not God and do not obey. So when God comes... There, he is going to burn everything with fervent heat. The elements will melt everything in a great noise. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person you ought to be in holy conduct and godliness? Knowing that this is going to come, we ought to be holy people in conduct and in godliness and doing the mission of Christ. This is a warning to give us it, it's, it's a hopeful warning, but it's to let us know that don't get too comfortable with the earth. The earth will be cleansed by fire. The earth will be cleansed by the coming of Christ. The earth will be cleansed and it will be destroyed. It's not going to just be destroyed. Watch what it says. It's not going to be just destroyed. Verse 13. Nevertheless, according... We, according to his promises, look for new heavens and new earth in which the righteousness, in which righteousness dwells. Now, either we are going to be with God in heaven, but we do know, and there are many passages that bear this out, that when God destroys, he creates also. And he's going to be creating new heavens and new earth. I don't know whether we're going to be living on the earth. I know it's going to be spiritual, and only those who've been faithful and dipped in the blood of the Lamb, he's baptized by the blood of Jesus Christ, are going to be there. It is going to be a place where there's going to be no pain. It's going to be a place. Let me just read the text. Let me just read the text. Let me go to Revelations. Let me go to Revelations. Let me go to Revelations and just read the text. Let's read the text. Look at Revelation chapter 21. The first verse. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth and the first the first heaven and the first earth passed away. Drop down a little further. Verse 3. I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, which is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There should be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, there should be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. With God, the creative force is going to be destruction, but then there is going to be newness in the newness of life. We could have this newness of life today. If any man be in Christ, he is a brand new creation. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You don't have to wait for the earth to be destroyed. God revives and restores life for those who have faith and those who have belief in him. But in the bottom line, when we are recreated, again, I use this term, and I know I used it in my father's eulogy. When we get our heavenly bodies, those who haven't died, we are transformed into our heavenly bodies. I'm praying I have a body like the silver surfer, but I'll be happy with the God, whatever God gives me. Okay? I'll be happy with whatever body God gives me. Whatever it is, it's not going to be a physical body. It is going to be a spiritual body that we live with God forever. No more tears. I've cried for enough things. I've cried for enough pain. I've been enduring pain, and I haven't gone through all the pain in my life, but I don't like pain. Unless you are nut and like pain. I don't like pain. I don't like suffering. I don't like needles. I don't like x-rays. I don't like pills. Amen. 
we will, we will live with God when the heavens are cleansed and reborn. Folks, this is a time, this, we are living in the last days. Amen. And the Bible says we should be about our father's business and we should be doing the work of the kingdom. And we should be warning every man that Jesus Christ is real. He wants to have a relationship with you. Jesus says, I behold, I come at the door and knock. I want you to sit down with me and I will sup with you and we'll have a relationship. We could, I could restore you. Uh, 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 we were restored back. We're, we aren't quite yet restored back to the idea of paradise because we still got to struggle with sin. But God says, I will forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of un unrighteousness. If you believe me, if you have faith in me, confess me as Christ to be the son of the living God. And get serious about this. We have enough church members. Okay? We have enough church members. We want people active in the kingdom of God. No, you're not working to be saved. But, folks, we need help. Amen. And the church has not come, participate once a week and say your amens, drop your two-cent tip, and get your communion and leave. Be active in the kingdom of God. Be active in the kingdom of God. We are God's family sent to show his love to a broken world, to share his hope of eternal life, to serve in his community and send others to do the same. It's going to, call, it's going to take for bravery. It's going to take patience. It may cost us blood, but it's going to cost us to be doing the mission of Christ where we help the coming of Christ. So when Jesus comes, either he catches us in the grave and he brings us back, or when Jesus comes, he doesn't catch the Christian like, uh-oh. We welcome God coming. He put an end to all this mess in life. Don't fall in love with the world. This is our lesson for you today. Consider your condition. If you need to make a statement, we give you this opportunity to come before us and make a statement. But consider this, that creation is cursed, creation cries, and creation will be cleansed. And either we'll be a part of it, Oh, we won't. Let, let us stand and sing the song of invitation. I'm going to trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. For Christ left to prepare a mansion for his children in the air. Well, I'll join him in that land where tears nor sorrows can be found. When I receive my mansion, mansion robe, robe and crown. Oh, Lord, I want to be I want a brand new oh, Lord, mansion I wanna robe be there. and crown. Crown in glory, yeah. there I, I know. know that peace yeah. and love will always survive forever. Let me be among the safe to your throne. Surround, Lord, please reserve my mansion, mansion, robe, and crown. Whether there is always fair, there is sunshine day and night. But no cold, no rain will fall there, for the sun shines ever bright. Well, I'll need no heavy garments, I'll just wrap my robe around. When I receive my mansion, a mansion robe and crown, my Lord. I want a man. Oh, I want a oh, Lord, I want to be there. The crown in glory. glory and there I know that peace and love will always abide forever. Let my Lord and Savior be your Lord and Savior, your throne surround. Lord, please.